people say, you know, there's that method acting of, you know, you create the character and it kind of comes from within. This is one of those things that, as they added the elements, she, you know, she appeared. We did these makeup tests and each one seemed to get better. The voice even changed. The first voice was a little bit like that. And, uh, and then it softened up as she got softer and it kind of, you know, went from being Margaret Thatcher, transitioned a little bit into Julia Childs and slowly but surely, I, Chris seemed to like that voice more than anything. That look, you know, took a, took really a one Saturday to, to perfect. Uh, the makeup pieces were put on to Robin. He went through makeup. We'd all decided on a particular wig and hair color that we liked. We found wardrobe that we thought was perfect for Mrs. Doubtfire, the right glasses. And then we did a videotape test. And on that particular videotape test, it's the first time you actually see Mrs. Doubtfire. And the first time you actually, Robin started to feel comfortable in the role. And it's an amazing sort of transformation. It's almost like a screen test because Robin just became Mrs. Doubtfire. Marker. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Ephigenia Doubtfire, and I'm very, excuse me, <laughs> my teeth. So, um, if you need any references, I've brought a few. No, I don't. I'm very sorry, I don't have them with me. But um, if you'd like to ask anything, that's fine, if you wish. Um, Should I sit, or... Um... Would you mind sitting down for us? Oh, please? God, no, this is not basic instinct. <laughs> Oh. If you don't mind, I'll just... Uh... <laughs> so nice that you have me here today, oh, dear. Miss, Thank I'm you. I'm so glad you could come. Well, it's nice to be I here. I have spoken to such strange people all day. Oh, I... It's so, so hard to find the right person. Good help. And I hope I am that. I really hope I am. I hope you are, too. I... I don't know. You don't? Tell me about yourself. Well, um... I'm trained in all sorts of, uh -huh. um, in case of medical emergencies, I know CPR, CPR? the Heimlich, um, Heimlich. All, all forms of um, self-defense, if the children need to know that too. Oh, I thanks. can, if necessary. And um, Have I, you had to perform a Heimlich uh, maneuver? Or once, uh, once. It was, um, someone was choking? Yes, on a piece of calamari, and I had to get behind them, and um, if you needed it, it's just that... Well, I'm, I'm quite strong in my own way. You look it. Thank you. Well, I try. Mark. Hello, just testing again. We'll try a simple smile. Much better then. And our big smile, which is to sell the teeth to make sure we've got our money from those. All right, if you want bigger glasses now, would that be lovely? We can try the... Smaller glasses, our Ben Franklin glasses. These are our big glasses so I can tell what religion you are. There we are. Lovely. Hold on. Have a little... Hold on here. There we go. Oh, here they are. These are lovely ones. Today we'll be reading from Henry Miller. See, those are half glasses. There and here. Put it down. Stop. Don't do that. There. No, no. Put it down. <laughs> Sorry. My name is Epigenaria. And you must be... Lydia. Hello, Lydia. Nice to meet you. And you are? I'm Chris. Hello, Chris. Oh, nice to meet you. And this must be... Natalie. Natalie. You can call me Natalie. Guys, can we come for a second? Sorry. Cut. Mark. Well, if it's all right with you, I think we've just shot the shit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> the makeup, I think on a good day, would take three hours, three and a half. Bad day, four hours, four and a half. Fee Neal, who had done makeups before, like long makeups on different people. Yeah, I guess with Danny DeVito on Batman, so I think where she started this, and maybe with Jack on, on the first Batman, Jack Nicholson. Sorry, we're dropping names here. Let me pick them up, okay, sweetheart? She came up with the idea that since you're f you have to face the mirror, and since I couldn't just fall asleep because I had to keep my face moving all the time, they have to test it and make sure that you go f through a full range of motion. She would put a a TV up here with a videotape player so you could see it in the mirror. Bad for subtitle movies, but great to watch films while you're in makeup. Our hairstylist Yolanda Tusing prepares Robin for makeup by slicking down his hair, putting in bobby pins, and then applying what we call a wig cap. 
and this will keep his hair really flat so it doesn't interfere with the application of the appliances. Greg Canham designed the makeup and Greg did several different sculptures on Robin's face and we actually had a picture of a woman who resembles Mrs. Doubtfire quite a bit and it was a black and white picture taken in the 40s and Greg sort of fashioned this makeup after this picture of this woman that we had. Robin's makeup is comprised of eight overlapping foam latex appliances all made fresh weekly so that we don't have a problem with shrinkage and they fit together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. When we first started doing Robin's makeup, it was upwards of around four hours. We knew we had to get it down from there because they wanted to be able to shoot with him for at least 10 hours a day. So if it took us four hours to get him ready and an hour to get him out at night, that was going to make for a very long day for Robin. So the more we did it, the faster we got. By the end of the film, it took me about three hours. Yolanda here is doing what we call iron curling, and this makes the hair have a much more lifelike quality. At this point, I'm gluing down his eyebrows and applying the forehead piece. This overlaps onto his temples and back into the hairline so that the wig appears to be growing right out of his head. This is the lower lip piece. As you can see, it does fit right into that chin piece and overlap into that area. So it was very important that these pieces had not shrunk at this point. The product I'm putting on his face now is what we call Pax Paint, sort of a cosmetic paint that we use on top of rubber. And we dry that, and on top of that, we can put any product we like. At this point, I'm going in with a colored Pax Paint. On top of the packs, I then go in with rubber mask grease paint, which I'm stippling on now. And that is also done in several layers. I'll do a flesh tone, then I'll go in with a pink tone, and then stipple a flesh tone back on top of it. We sort of softened out the front of his face so it looked really like peaches and cream. And then I left in the splotchiness around the cheeks and the neck like an old lady would have. The eyebrows are then applied, a little mascara and uh, he did wear a little bit of eyeshadow as well. Now Yolanda is placing the wig on. And there he is.